Hello, I'm Tastus, and welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to show you more time City of the Damned, as well as talk about what I intend to do with this channel. So, more time is a gang-based game set in the Warhammer Fantasy world, um, created by Games Workshop. You've more than likely heard of them, funnily enough. Uh, they have licensed a lot of video games. Uh, some are good, some are bad, and some are somewhere in the middle. More Time, when it first came out, sat sort of on the not-so-great side of things. Um, and ha had a bit of a rocky start. The RNG was dreadful. And um, the AI was, and this was still, in a certain extent, still pretty dodgy. So without further ado, I'm going to start a new gang. You have five choices if you own all the DLC. You have human mercenaries who fight for Reichland, the province within the Empire. They are mercenaries. Um, if you know anything about Warhammer, then you will know that there are no real good guys. Although the humans do tend to fall on the side of order. Uh, you then have Skaven. Evil Ratman. Uh, who live in the sewers and the dark places of the world and hail from the Under Empire. You have the Witch Hunters, which are temples of the Order of Sigmar, who go around and hunt, well, evil. Chaos cults, monsters, abominable undead, witches and sorcerers, it says here. On the other hand, you have the Sisters of Sigmar. They fill a similar role, except they are mostly they were based in Mortime when a comet hit it, and they were generally speaking under suspicion of being somehow tainted because they were say, spared the wrath of the comet. And then you have the Cult of the Possessed, Chaos worshippers, who uh, want to spread the will of their gods in the world. Um, there are four Chaos Gods, none of them are particularly nice. In no particular order you have Korn, the god of bloodshed and murder. You have Zinch, the changer of ways and is mostly a, a giant plotting god. Everything that happens, they say, is Cinch's Tinch, will. You have Slanesh, the god of excess, and Nurgle, the god of despair, and plagues, and pestilence, and many other horrible things. So I'm going to pick uh, the warband I've played the most for now, and one I'm most fond of, and that's Skaven. The voice acting in this isn't actually too bad when it comes to this. Some of them are horrific and some of them aren't bad. Um, none of them are particularly awful, but this one is quite funny. Well, I'm not going to listen to the whole thing. That's just a tutorial box. So when you first start out, you can't do anything because it wants you to go and sort out your warband first. But the first thing we're going to do is actually sort out the veteran system. And because I've been playing for a while, I have level 7 with my overall um, leadership perk, I guess is the best way of putting it. It affects all warbands, so as soon as I start a warband, whether it's Skaven or uh, Mercenaries, Possessed, whatever, I will automatically start with level 7, 37 out of 45 experience. And this allows me to... Um, give perks to my warband, so if we go to the veteran skills, I can take uh, ones such as the Commander, which reduces the upkeep cost for leaders and impressive warriors. That is quite useful because a lot of the um, a lot of the more expensive minions that you can hire over time will push you towards bankruptcy, and it will it doesn't often take you too many failed missions to end up in a position where money is a bit tight. We can then pick. Another one, uh, I look at training is another one that costs a lot of money. So I will take Scholar and I can upgrade that twice. Uh, 
There's also healer to reduce treatment costs. Again, I'll upgrade that twice. I'm also going to upgrade commander one more time as well. And then I'm going to look at negotiator. Now this is actually very useful early on. I spent all my points, haven't I? Yes. Yeah, negotiator is very helpful early on. It provides me additional time to fulfill wordstone requests. Now what happens is, is if we look back here, this, when the smuggler's den opens, you'll have requests come from um, the your sponsor who has sent you here, send, wanting to, you to send wordstone, which you collect in game, back to him. Now, if you fail once, it's not so bad. If you fail a couple of times, then you start ending up having some of your party injured, and it gets worse and worse and worse. So you want to keep him on side. So next is warband management. So we have Queek Mange Hide, our leader. Um, we can then select a hero, and the heroes are the ones with three stars. And you will, this is a Night Runner. They come healthy, with no history, and no rank. So we'll have him. He will probably be our main killing force. The leader for Skaven isn't actually all that combat, uh, combat heavy. It's really this guy, the Night Runner, who's going to do most of the heavy lifting when it comes to killing. Our henchmen are our lowest order of uh, combatants. And we have a choice between the Warp Guard and the Verminkin. The Warp Guard are your tanks, as far as Skaven go. And they also have a natural resistance to Warpstone. Because when you pick up Warpstone, you have this opportunity to either get a perk or a disadvantage. Most of the time, it's a disadvantage. So most of the time, you want to have someone who is resistant pick them up and that is the warp guard. The problem with the warp guard is he is very slow so you end up having to wait for him to catch up to do stuff. So you often find that you, your night runner and your verminkin are ahead of the rest of them trying to keep order. So we're going to take two verminkin and we'll take one warp guard. So, if we look at the, our inventory, he comes with no armor, just clothing, uh, weeping blades, and shurikens. So our leader is probably mostly well equipped. Now we do have, or we should have, some basic equipment that we can provide them straight away. Except we don't, so we're going to have to buy stuff. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get light armor. Now we have three light armors we can buy from the store. So we'll equip our leader with light armor. And we may look at equipping our night runner. Now the problem is, is that light armor affects climb, leap, and jump down tests by minus 10. But it does give him armor absorption. However, clothing provides him a dodge chance. And dodging with these guys will become very easy on night runners. Well, all Skaven, but prefer for primarily night runners. So we're probably going to just leave it at that, except for our warp guard, who we will give heavy arm. Uh, no, we're going to give him light armor because heavy armor is going to slow him down too much. You can also give him a head slot. These will be for potions, and this is a secondary slot. One of the key things with Skaven is that. In many cases, you're going to be outmatched in melee combat. So what you want to do is, where possible, get have an advantage and hit them at range. So we're going to provide all of our guys with shurikens. That way, we, we will hopefully not get our faces kicked in as soon as we enter the battlefield. Okay, so we're pushing nine minutes already. Okay. Um... We could also customize our guys slightly, and I mean slightly. So if we look at our leader, there we go. We can customize all these different parts, but it's usually just picking a style. Uh, not much of a style difference here. Um, 
and then color. So there we have a bald headed rat rather than a rat with wraps around his head. You can also change the style of his armor, but there's only one style, but you can pick different colors. I will not bore you with that, and we might do that off camera or off record. So we go back to the warband. So we filled out our basics. We do will eventually want to have some guys in reserve because these guys will eventually get their heads kicked in and not be able to fight. One thing I do want to make sure is that this guy's not using a spear and he's using a halberd. Okay, he's using a spear, but I want a halberd. There we go. Okay. So let's get straight to it and get straight into the campaign. So you will be given a number of options per per day. You only do certain amounts of things per day. So you can see that you have three different choices here. We've got we can walk in the fog, and each and it's poor and very poor. And the skull with normal extra is the difficulty. Marked for death is the type of uh, mission it is. So that's normal difficulty, that's normal difficulty, and that's normal difficulty. So it's really now down to what we want more. Do we want to have more loot, which is the icon on the right, or do we want more wordstone, the icon on the left? Wordstone is money, so I always prioritize wordstone over anything else. Okay, so, it's, so we'll discount that one because that's got very poor. These two just have poor. So we've got poor, very poor, and poor, very poor, so it really makes no difference. They are exactly the same mission. Okay, well, let's pick that one then. So we will launch and deploy our Skaven. Originally, when Wartime first came out, it had a big problem in the way of loading times. It took like five or six minutes for the mission to load, so you ended up going away, having a cup of coffee, coming back, and then you'd be sitting there going, oh, it's almost there. Also, it didn't tell you how far away from completion it was, so it just sat there going, chaos is working, don't worry, and you'd just be sat there going, working, where exactly? Okay, so we have our objective, which is make the enemy warband route, and then the, uh, the sub-objective is, the optional objective, is to steal the holy tomes. Okay. So each different group have a specific item that they carry, which in this mission, if you collect two of them, you get an extra bonus. And it is really worth trying to get the optionals. They really bump up your reward at the end. So now we will deploy our Skaven. If we go to the map, if I can remember what button it is to go to the map, Okay, I can't. So we'll place them here. Them here. And I think we're still close to each other. Yep. And that will do. So I have no idea. Well, we know that since we've been told it's Holy Tome, that we're fighting Sisters of Sigmar. So we don't really want to get into combat with them that quickly. And we certainly don't want to separate. So we have the advantage in speed. They are slow, and they don't have much in the way of, if anything, in the way of ranged outside of holy power. And what we want to do is we want to get the drop on them, neutralize them individually, and hopefully not get caught. So I'm going to try and get a decent position to be in. Which we can use to assault them. So we'll put him here. You then can go into ambush stance. It's the only thing I can do at the moment. Oh no, I can end my turn and not go into ambush stance. So basically ambush stance, if I, you see the red area, if an enemy walks within that area I will immediately go and attack them. It's not always a good option and sometimes it is better to just save your points and dodge, but uh, in this case it's unlikely that anyone's going to come, so I'm not too fussed about that. I need to work out where the rest of my guys are. I think I've gone the wrong way. So, if you go back over the blue markers, the blue markers is where you have gone and how at what point a an action point has been taken away from you for the movement. So, if you retrace that, you can basically change direction. 
I don't want him to go into ambush stance because if he runs off trying to fight somebody, then he may not be able to get support, so I'm just going to end my turn. And this guy is going to go over here. I'm still not sure of my... Let me find out what the map button is. Button mapping. Ah, middle mouse. Middle mouse? Let's just change that. Okay. All oh, right. Fine. Okay, middle mouse. Right. Ooh, they've changed that since I last played. Okay, so where is the guy I'm playing? He's there. And we started here. So I am going the right way. I don't like that middle mouse. I'll have to change that at some point. So we're going to put him in dodge stance here. You can see the green thing in front of me. That's a small wordstone cluster. And this, that's our objectives. Well, it's, a, it's an overriding objective throughout all the game. You are looking to collect as much of that as possible. In some ways, it is more important than actually completing the mission. It's better in some ways to grab a whole lot of wordstone and lose than it is to necessarily uh, win the mission. Alright, I put him in overwatch stance. So if somebody comes near, he'll start throwing shurikens. I really need to get these guys off the ground because as soon as the sisters start appearing at or near me, I will have run out of time and I really need to avoid getting hit by them. So as you can see, the turns work a lot like Total War, if you're familiar with that, that set of games, and it just goes through each character bit by bit, moves one, then moves the next, then moves the next, then moves the next. Um, it's loosely based on the initiative of the characters, although I've never really worked it out because my Skaven, all of them, are faster than the sisters, but yet this one is moving last, even though, yeah, it's okay, it's my warp guard. But I'm not necessarily sure that that's right. There must be an element of randomness. So I need to move him up quickly. And I will put him here. And so the enemy moves their last unit, character even. A new round has started. And it's my turn. So I'm heading, broadly speaking, that way. Which is actually probably the wrong way. However, I can turn around and I want to head over. I think I want to head over here, really. Yeah. We can see that the Sisters of Sigmar started all the way over here. So they will probably be getting close to here now. So, at this point, I'm more concerned about not losing guys. So, if I head my... Whoops. Not sure what I tried on there. It doesn't look like there was anything there. Um... Was that the thing on the floor? I don't know. So what we can do is we can scout out a bit by using the turn system against itself. Because now I can move back and go, well, okay, they're not there. So if I go and get stuck on terrain, yep, they're not there, so I'll go this way. So I don't want to go much further than that because if they here, I don't want to end up in combat with them too far away from everybody else. This guy can end up moving a lot of distance, so I just want to I just want to keep him back a bit, make sure he doesn't end up isolated. This guy is going to gather wordstone, and we'll see what happens to him. So this little fragment he'll pick up. Nope. And it's a negative warp effect. It's not great. Move him forward, put him in overwatch stance. I'm not going to separate my guys too much because if the sisters appear, I want to keep them a bit strung out. I don't want to engage them all at once. I certainly don't want to engage them alone. the rest of them. It's quite easy to get turned around in this game because you because the maps are 
well, they're not pre-generated, but because they were used a lot and used in different angles, you can end up finding that they all look a bit like each other, and you end up kind of getting a bit um, confused. So now we wait to see what the enemy is going to do, if any of them are going to appear. Nope. The AI moves in real time, so it's not it, it's not smart it's not smart enoughly programmed in so that if a character moves and I can't see it, then it will move it. It will just oh there we go. There's our first sister of Sigmar. It will just move the character normally, so that often can lead to just waiting and wondering what on earth is going on. So he's going the wrong way, and he's our heavy hitter. He's also our most uh, one of my more tough mod, uh, units, so I'm going to put him up here, but I'm not going to put him in dodge stance anyway. We've also discovered another sister, so they are all over here. I think what I'm going to do next turn is move into this building here and try and use range. It doesn't mean giving up wordstone, but these girls can hit really, really hard. They can't move very quick, as you can see. I got this game, um, I think I got it this game just as it came out, and as I said before, when it first came out, it was fairly ropey. Um, it was not well optimized at all. Even though it's a PC-only release, it was fairly touch and go at the best of times. Can I get up here? Yes. Ooh, I got stuck on something. Switch weapons. I may not have line of sight. Yes, I do. So, I'll shoot her. It's not really shooting, it's throwing, but you know, I'll take what I can get at this point. Okay. Same goes with this guy, our leader. We want him to be out, as out of harm's way as possible. He's not hes not weak, exactly, but if he goes and gets hurt, you can't, while I'm here, you can't uh, do anything while in that radius. So, I will put him over here. Ooh, I'm going to give it a shot. He makes it. There we go. I'm going to put him in Overwatch. Hopefully he can see something from here. Okay, so this guy has probably got the longest run. I think we're going to put him... Yeah, he's going to have to go here. So that when that ca that model... That, no, I keep wanting to call them models. I'm a wargamer as well, so every now and then it's like model, model, model. Especially when it's Warhammer. So what we want to do is we want to put him... We, well, what we have done is we put him in an ambush stance so that if that character moves close enough to the stairs ramp ramp, then he will try and intercept her. I will do the same here, so that if he, she manages to slip by somehow, she'll still get a clobbering. Of course, she will get, she gets a bonus for whatever reason, and ow, charges my main unit, my, uh, my warp guard main unit, anyway. So I, I'm lucky I get a counter attack, which I miss. I think, unfortunately, she is a... She might be a hero character, so he's in for a world of hurt. I might have to help him out a bit. Go on. Nice. Um, we're going to put him in dodge stance. I didn't think he could do dodge stance, but I think because I haven't got a shield, that's not prevented him. So if I put him in dodge stance yeah oh he failed his dodge so he's now surrounded uh, he's going to be quite difficult to get out of there however I think we're going to have to try So 
So the question is, is do I recommend this game? Um, yeah, for the most part. There's a couple of things that's worth saying about this. Uh, the RNG is still not perfect. It's a lot better than it was. But it still occasionally feels that a 90% chance to do something is still not good enough. And you end up feeling like, well, if I, I seem to be missing an awful lot for 90%. That having been said, I'm going to try and aim. That having been said, it is a lot of fun. It is a quite a tactical game. I will say that the AI can be a bit stupid at times. It still seems to get stuck on buildings periodically, um, or corners, or various other things that you easily should be able to navigate around. But it is a lot better than it used to be. It's also fairly easy to beat, although that having been said, I'm probably going to end up losing this mission, just because I've said it. It's also a game that can be played... Oh, I got a nice positive bonus there. It's also a game that can be played um, in short bouts. Each game takes about half an hour, and then an additional ten minutes or so to do maintenance. Okay. Probably gonna regret doing this. Because my guess is, is they're all gonna come out the woodwork. Oh, I missed. They're all gonna come out the woodwork next turn, and I'm gonna end up having my boss in a nasty combat I don't want to be in. So, I think. Oh, that's a bit of terrain. And the that is what causes the AIs to get caught. Right, so I can charge. So, charging, I have less chance of doing, but. I'll at least get him in combat, and he, if he does hit, he will do 50% more damage. Uh, sorry, 50% more damage for the charge, plus 6 for the strength. Ooh, nice. Very nice. Skaven have a really good innate ability to dodge. 40% for your lowest minion is not to be sniffed at. I'm going to put him in here. I probably could have charged if I had worked that better, but I was more interested in actually just trying to get him into combat. So, I've given them... Well, they came with clubs and shields, and really what I should have done is gotten rid of the shields and just given them two clubs, because if you have a 40% chance to dodge, you're not going to want to take the... Ooh, ow. The 20% chance to parry. It's absolutely pointless. Okay, so I've got two choices here. I can either go for the kill, and that's a 74% chance, or I go for close to a kill. I think I'm going to go for the kill. It's... Oh, there we go. There she goes down. And then I am i can't disengage, unfortunately, so I'm going to have to go into dodge stance. Not ideal. However, now that she's surrounded and has two Skaven in combat with her, she's going to have to take an all-alone check, which means that she may not actually be able to do anything other than try and either dodge or literally nothing this time, which will be good for me, and hopefully it will keep this man on his feet. Although that said, getting knocked down and out doesn't mean that your character has been killed. You will get a... You get a table uh, to roll on. Well, it's automatically rolled on, which will say what happens. Oh, no. Now, this is a hero. Oh, that was close. If she actually managed to hit my character with that, it would have been painful. So I think the only thing I can do at this point is I need to get him down. I need to get him down because he is my easily best and more agile fighter. I need to switch weapons. Oh, that was the wrong button. Oops. Okay, so change the plan. I'm going to have to get him involved. Now, hopefully I can get in without triggering the ambush. I managed to do that because she could not ambush me around my own unit. Uh, so I managed to use my unit to prevent her from attacking me until I got to the point where I'm touching the red circle that's around her, which is the area of which combat, combat can happen. So I'm just going to go straight up and try and attack her. Hopefully I get a crit. That's exactly what I wanted. So she's stunned. She can't do anything else this turn. I can't do anything else this turn because I switch weapons. But I don't care. So I'm going to go straight for my 40% dodge chance. 
That's a good turn of the books. Now I might be able to knock her out this turn. Yeah, very nice. And dodge. Well, the only thing you can do is gang up on them at this point. Uh, the Skaven also get a nice inheritability that the more that, that you can pay for, that the more Skaven you, you have in close combat, the better they get. <laughs> so she has failed her all alone check, so she is not doing anything at all. She, you can see in the top right, and you probably noticed it before I've spoken about this, but you can actually see the roll test. That she required 36, she got 39, so she failed. So low numbers are good in this case. And we'll see if he can hit her. Down she goes. Now, I'm going to move her, him on top of her. Hopefully that will keep her under control. Actually, wasn't a good idea. He has very little health. No, she, it's because she's stunned, she still can't do anything next turn. All she's going to do is get up. The, as you further go on, they get more um, strategic and offensive points to work with. The more likely they are able to swing as soon as they stand up. Okay. Where's this guy? This guy is over here somewhere. I am going to switch weapons. Okay, so I think we'll see if we can actually get him in combat. I am going to have to go all the way around. But we can. We need to get her down as quickly as possible. She's nasty, and that two-handed mace thing is really painful. I'm... interesting. If, but there's no point, because if I disengage, then all that's going to happen is he'll have to stand still. So I'll just end the turn. I'm going to loot with this guy. I don't know if it was her that I needed. I don't think it was. Who was it? Sarah Hild Holzman and Sarah Hild Lorshan. Apparently they just don't have very imaginative parents. Uh, although, I will take that Wordstone shot. I don't really want that book. And I'll take the draft. And I get what looks like a positive effect. So, I'm going to switch weapons if I can. Because I really don't want to have to move too far away from this and I equally don't want to end up getting caught in another combat if I can help it. So I'm just putting him on overwatch. It'll also give me an idea of what's going on around me. And the same for this guy. I'm going to put him over on another angle. So in the top left you can see what you will be able to see, is a blue bar and a red bar. The blue bar is my morale, and you can see the 16 and the 21, and the 16 is my threshold. So if my morale falls below 16, I take a t check to see if I run away. On the other hand, you have uh, the, sis the Sisters of Sigma, almost called them Sisters of Battle, who have a 21, which means they have a higher threshold, and although they have lost two of their sisters, they have they are only just below where I am on morale. Hopefully we can make that a lot more painful for them. Down she goes. So, now I'm a bit confused as to what to do. I need, I think I need her loot. So we'll take that. Objective completed. Excellent. Objective so I now just need Sir Hild Lotion. And that is almost certainly going to be her, the sister's boss. So we'll go into dodge here. Because I don't want to move too far away from everybody else. So I really want to just pass the turn. This guy is almost out of action, so we don't want that. It, he's going to have to take an injury roll anyway, by the looks of it. So I'm just going to put him over here in dodge stance. Hopefully he can see someone up here before they actually get... Ah, here we go. So she ran over... It, it's like a trap. And he hits her. Excellent. It's sort of like a trap, and there's just um, environmental effects. So she ran up, Saw my Skaven, took a hit, and then decided that she didn't really want to do that. 
So they've lost three out of five. So basically any more losses and they'll start taking morale checks. A new round has started. I think what I'm going to do. Yeah. Oops. That was lucky. That was quite lucky. So I'm going to try and just run her down. Will she counter? No. It's not actually it's not actually their boss, which is quite unusual. It's usually their boss which you end up having to try and kill. We'll switch weapons, bring his club and his shield, and we'll take him in. Okay. Now hopefully I have one more point where I can go up, loot, and take the journal. I'm also going to, for the sake of it, take her hammer. And now they'll have to take a uh, warband morale check next t the next time one of their characters activates, which isn't going to be for a while. So I think what I'm going to do is, now that I've only got, they've only got one character left, I'm going to just try and find some wordstone to steal. Oh, there we go. Oh, except he can't. I think I'm going to prioritize, although the draft will probably get me more uh, crowns, which is the currency, I'm going to go with trying to secure warp stone. Okay, so then the other one's up there, but if I do that, I'm going to block. So, I'm going to do that. And we will use my boss to go up here. There's also a chest. I think his inventory is actually also full, but we'll see. Uh, well, it's fragment for fragment, and I'm not giving up that holy tome, so we'll leave him up here. I think we'll, yeah, we'll just... No, we'll leave him here. Okay. I'm going to leave him here. I don't want to have him in combat. I don't want to move him and risk getting him in combat. And the enemy route fails, and that is the end of the game. Okay, so my reward is 3 XP for all my uh, my warband. Plus I get 2 fragments, no shards, and 1 cluster, and 2 bits of loot from winning. I also get three fragments, one shard for my treasury, and then I should also get some additional rewards, yep, there you go, for completing all objectives. And those are useful, I'm probably going to sell them though, to be fair, I rarely ever use them. Okay, so, each, um... Each character will then get their experience as well as an advancement if he hits a certain amount of experience. So he got he got a total of seven experience. He will also probably get seven experience. And so you can see each one gets something different. The most valuable is the person who takes out the most enemies, which I think was my night runner as usual. And there we go. So, I also get 4 out of 5 points towards level 1. So that's not a bad start. That's not a bad start at all. Considering I'm going to need 75 or so uh, wordstone, I have 25 so far. Um, sorry, that's not total wordstone, that is weight value. So my, I now need to pay everybody, and this is where you start to see how the game progresses and why you should always do um, upkeep related perks where possible. So it's 15 crowns for the whole gold coins, ground, yeah, usually crowns. Uh, for, I think it's gold coins in this, but it's crowns in more time the board game that this uh, board game that this is based off of. Anyway, so 15 gold coins, or GC, uh, out of my 328. Thankfully no one got injured. And so now we look at stats. Now for most Skaven, agility is your prime physical attribute. You don't want to get hit, but you also do want to do things like um, be able to climb, leap, jump, that sort of thing. So it boost, helps boost dodge, and 
it helps you climb, which gets your guys way out of danger. Um, you have then leadership, intelligence, and alertness. And leadership is what it sounds like, morale. Intelligence is usually spell damage and spell resistance. Alertness is initiative or who goes first. Now, he's already got a fairly decent leadership, but you can always do with more leadership when you're a Skaven, so I'll give him a point there. And then I'm going to give him a ballistic skill. Now, you may think, well, why? Because his, you can only have 12 in total, and at the moment his weapon skill is only middling. Well, that's true, but if I don't uh, if I go straight for weapon skill I, and I come up against a Sisters of Sigmar uh, group, they're going to kick my head in. So I want to try and have a, have it so that I can actually do damage at range as well as in weapons uh, melee. Because if I can take two turns or so just throwing shurikens or shooting warp pistols into them, then I'd much rather that than try and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them in total, in on the on ground. So we'll do that. I'm going to then say apply. And then we'll go on to our next. Alertness for, for our Night Runner and Weapon Skill. Same reasoning effectively, except the other way around. He can already he's already reasonable at uh throwing stuff, but he's not that great at combat and if I, I on the other hand I do want to actually be able to go toe to toe at some point. These guys are a bit of everything, so should I, yeah, I did do everything. So Agility, you might as well at this point boost agility because then you raise the chance to dodge by 5% per point. Toughness does increase overall wounds, as they call it in this, or hit points. But really, I'd much rather not get hit than get hit and have a bit more health. I'd much rather just not get hit at all. So accuracy, the last martial, um, martial skill, is how often you crit, in effect. So, it's a great skill to have, but in order to even crit, you already need to hit. So, I'm going to increase his ballistic skill. Accuracy affects both uh, melee and ranged. Again, agility and ballistic skill. And lastly, this guy. I'm going to go toughness, because his agility is always going to suck. And... Ooh, that's a bad ballistic skill. So I think I'm actually just going to go weapon skill rather than try and catch that up, especially when his max is only 9 anyway. And that is that. That's our little Skaven warband. We can then go to the shop and we can sell and buy stuff. I'm not going to show you this because it's shopping. So you can see that our little potions will get us a little bit of money. And we can then buy stuff that we haven't found elsewhere. Helmets, really good thing to have, especially on your uh, tanking characters. The stun resistance, as well as the armor absorption, is really helpful. So, they still haven't opened up the Smuggler's Den, and so with that, the only thing to do is press next day. A new shipment has been requested. And there's our shipment request. So, is it 75 like I said? It's 75. And I've got 11 days to do it in, and I already have I've got 11 days left, and I've already got a th third of what I need. So, we're in good stead. And that is more time. You can get it on Steam. Um, I will put in the comment section how much it is, and a link directly to it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and see you next time.